right, so I'd like you to close your eyes, please, and imagine that you are on a white sand beach. Uh, it's you arrive near sunset. You can hear the the crash of the ocean, the screech of seabirds, and smell that salt air. You know, but you don't have time to appreciate the sunset because you're on a job. You head south, find the cave you've been looking for. Uh, it's a dark stone cave, barely visible above the high tide, but from inside you can smell that stale salt air and mold. And uh, as you go into the cave, you find yourself in a cavern. And in that cavern sits a dragon that you've been hired to deal with, sitting on top of a pile of treasure. What do you want to do? All right, guys. Feel free to open your eyes. Um, that might have seemed like, like a guided meditation, but actually, it's my favorite hobby, role-playing. Uh, today I'm going to cover uh, the, a brief history of RPGs, role-playing games, uh, the massive appeal of role-playing, and of course, how these games are played. But first, you might be asking yourself, what is role-playing? Role-playing is a kind of game we all play, where we tell a story, all the players involved get to input and add to the story, so it's a bit like improv acting or collaborative writing, except it's actually fun. <laughs> uh, humans have been playing role for thousands of years. I mean, children do it nearly instinctively. Uh, it's fun to pretend to be an astronaut or a monster or a princess. Actually, the very first role players were in the Han Dynasty in China. Uh, they were the first people to play live action role playing, LARPing, uh, when they started to reenact famous battles for their entertainment. Nerds have always enjoyed <laughs> war games. Um, Steve Darlington, RPG designer and game historian, uh, told, er, has a site where he says, um, brief history, in the 1950s and 60s, people loved playing war games like chess, except with little miniature tanks and soldiers. Um, generally through World War II, or er, from World War II, but in 1966, Tolkien released Lord of the Rings, and suddenly everybody wanted to play with orcs, trolls, elves, and boars. In 1971, TSR Games releases Chainmail, which was the very first uh, semi-role-playing game where people uh, would play as a single soldier in a war. Uh, Chainmail became so popular, people started modifying it. And by 1973, uh, Dave Arneson shows Gary Gygax his revisions, including magic, elves, trolls, and, you know, all the spells you can cast. And in 1974, they have uh, together banged out the first copy of Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the first edition was a little crazy. Uh, each rule was written very differently from the others. Uh, you, you had little strange quirks like if you were a female, of course you had less intelligence and less strength because it was set in a medieval, you know, and it was pretty awful. Fortunately, we have come up to fifth edition. Oh, where's my picture going? Okay, no worries. Um, in 5th edition, uh, it's been streamlined, uh, it's easy to play, easy to run, so uh, you can tell any sort of story, tell any or make any sort of character you'd like. It's very inclusive, and it's super fun. But, that's not all the games there are. Because if you're not into fantasy, we've got Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk is a uh, game about high technology and low life, set in a future where corporations like McDonald's and Starbucks have their own armies. <laughs> if you don't like that, we've got Call of Cthulhu, which is about finding out that there are much bigger fish and uh, probably living right beneath your feet. Um, eventually, the old ones will come back, so it's kind of a horror game. But you know, if you're not into horror, you could totally play the, the, <laughs> the toys from Toy Story with Engine Heart. Um, granted, the original setting is set in the post-apocalypse, but it's still toys. <laughs> so, this is a list of everybody that I found that, well, not everybody, this is a big old list of uh, role players. You might notice Stephen Colbert, Rosario Dawson, Anderson Cooper. Uh, on the Colbert show, 
uh, admitted his love for Dungeons and Dragons. All right, so if you are interested, <clears throat> if you are interested, you're probably going to need some supplies. But uh, what kind will you need? Well, fortunately, not very much. Three to six willing participants whose schedules don't clash much, and that's super important. The schedules because the biggest headache of these games is setting it up so everybody can play. You need paper and pencils, especially pencils, because uh, you're going to be erasing stuff. A full set of dice like you see there, everything from a four-sided dice to a 20-sided dice. And of course, uh, mini figurines, um, depending on your group. Not everybody uses them, but, you know, it helps you imagine your little character there. Oh, and um, Funyuns. <laughs> So, uh, there are two kinds of players. Uh, first off, there's the characters. Uh, these players control one character in the world, usually the heroes. Um, each of these little characters have their own pursuits, goals, and ambitions. Uh, and then, of course, there's the game masters. Uh, that's generally me. Um, these control all the minor characters, from peasants to kings, all the monsters, uh, and the environment itself. And yes, I'm a, a player too, even though I've got all that power. Um, just want you to have a good time, because if you're not having a good time, I can't play. Um, there are three steps according to the player's handbook. Uh, the first is, the GM uh, describes a scenario or the environment, kind of like that uh, thing in the very, very beginning there. Uh, second, the players decide what they want to do. Uh, they roll dice if it's complicated or if there's a chance of failure. And then the GM narrates the results of the player's actions. Here's some short story examples. Eric is playing a crafty rogue named Tarragon. He sees the dragon sleeping on its horde and decides to try to talk to it. He not only convinces the dragon to leave the area, but also to pay for the damage it did to the village. <laughs> Susie's character, Valma, is a warrior with a gigantic axe. She decides to kill the dragon by chopping it to bits. She makes a critical hit. The dragon's head comes flying off, covering her in blood and viscera. Next. Sam decided to be the power, uh, powerful wizard Wonglum, able to transmute creatures at a whim. The wizard takes a hard look at the dragon and turns it into a chicken. <laughs> Hopefully uh, you guys have learned a little bit about role playing today. For instance, that Dungeons & Dragons came out in 1974, and it was the very first RPG. You know that uh, some of the most creative and influential people play role-playing games, from Stephen to Colbert to Rosario Dawson. And you know how simple it is to play, just three steps and an imagination. So I hope I've uh, gotten you interested. Maybe your guys are looking to maybe play. If not, that's cool too. And uh, yeah, here's my bibliography. All right. Thanks.